Disaster Management Agency during a tour of the affected areas in the KMC. It occurs when prolonged rain falls over a short period of time, causing intense damage. This part of the Gambia has in recent years experienced flooding, which at some point has rendered people homeless, loss of belongings and even loss of life. With a rain of approximately 10 to 14 hours in the greater Banjul area, it is inevitably true that this would cause some destruction with reported cases of incidents of damages in the Carnifin municipality. The National Disaster Management Agency early Tuesday morning decided to get right to the communities to access the situation on the ground with visits to hotspots like Bundung, Talinding, Dipakunda, Bakau and Kotusilo. The NDMA KM Regional Coordinator explains that the rain has caused severe damage, citing a situation when they came across in Bundung where a room is constructed under an old well. Um, today we have, after the 10, 40, 10 to 14 hours of rainfall, we have received complaints within the wards. Um, in the morning, I went out with my team. First, we, visit, we had a complaint at Bundung, Bundung 6 Youngson. From Bundu 6 Junction, Talinding, Igbo Town, all these other areas were all affected. Um, when we visited Bundu, we have realized that there is a, we have discovered an old well under somebody's room, meaning the room, the, the building was constructed on top of the well. And on, in the same well, we have realized that the Sokawi the, the soccer that leads to the septic tank is also has passed through the same roof. At Talinding, some compounds were inundated, making it extremely difficult for water to run due to blockages. This was a scene that saw the rainwater virtually was away a privately owned vehicle that led to the driver sustaining unspecified injuries. We visited Talinding, where we realized um, a vehicle was taken away, carried away, a whole vehicle was carried away into the into the, the water and we understand that though we didn't meet the driver there we were not at the scene at the, the time of it's happening but we understand that the driver is currently hospitalized according to eyewitnesses the driver was trying to park the vehicle because the water was coming with high velocity but at the end he was not able to control the vehicle then he has to jump out leave the vehicle to go Later he realized he has something in the vehicle that he wants to secure upon doing that he was also trapped inside the uh, For now, uh, it, things are very serious uh, because in Talinding, in Bundung, in Bakau, it's the, same, it's the same type of people that have been affected for the past one year or two. Uh, water is, is, is all, all over the, the, the municipality because the volume is too much and then the amount of the, the, the drainage system in the municipality is not that much good to make sure that all the volume of water that was poured down yesterday has been carried out. So due to that fact, uh, water has to divert to people's house, people's compound, and then, you know, destroy their properties, you know, destroy their, their, their houses and all those things. Indiscriminate waste dumping is another factor contributing to the increasing effects of flooding, particularly crowded areas in the metropolis. We have seen that indiscriminate waste dumping is everywhere. Everywhere within the municipality, any open space you see is being used as a waste dumping site. And they are not um, officially identified waste dumping sites. It is just indiscriminate waste dumping. We went to Talindi, we, ha we found the, the residents they are quarreling about to fight due to the fact that the waste that they have dumped in somewhere has blocked the waterway. In Abuko, it's the same thing. You go to Dipakuna, it's the same thing. So within the municipality, waste management is a major concern. It has been a 24 hours of incessant rain and for all blessings of rainwater, most communities have witnessed its fury and anger. As the water subsides, efforts are underway to assess the extent of damages and for help to reach the affected communities. Reporting for GRTS News, I am Abdullah Baji. Time now to take our first break. When we come back, we take a look at news from outside the Gambia. We'll be right back. Seems every time I try. 
gotta forget about you. With a dozen roses, such put us down you. The joy of children let me around you. I wanna know, I wanna know. These are moments you wouldn't want to miss. Is it love, lust, obsession, or infatuation? You want to find out? I'll provide you with all the answers and solutions to your problems on The Love Zone. Welcome back. Now the U.S. Attorney General is reforming the criminal justice system and the centerpiece of Eric Holder's plan is the trimming of nonviolent drug offenders. As CNN's Jessica Yellen reports, Holder has found support from both sides of the political divide. As the nation's top law enforcement officer. With an outsized, unnecessarily large prison population, we need to ensure that incarceration is used to punish, to deter, and to rehabilitate, but not merely to warehouse and to forget. Attorney General Eric Holder announced the Justice Department will stop seeking mandatory minimum sentences for offenders accused of low-level nonviolent drug crimes, like a small-time drug courier. Instead, they'll ask to send them to drug treatment and community service programs. This is our opportunity to divine this time, our time, as one of progress and innovation. This is our promise to forge a more just society. He says he's discussed inequalities in the criminal justice system with the president for years, an issue the president addressed in emotional remarks after the Trayvon Martin verdict. There is a history of racial disparities in the application of our criminal laws. According to Holder, the U.S. holds an astounding 25% of the world's prisoners. Our federal prisons are 40% over capacity, and the nation spent $80 billion on the prison system in the year 2010, all of which may explain the unusual bipartisan support for ending mandatory minimum sentences that ranges from Tea Party Republican Rand Paul some argue with evidence that our drug laws are biased, that they are the new Jim Crow. To the ACLU, which hailed Holder's announcement as a crucial effort to end wasteful and harmful federal prison overcrowding. There's also support in the U.S. Senate for further changes, which would give judges more discretion in sentencing. Among the senators who support revising the laws, Tea Party favorites Rand Paul and Mike Lee, who are joining with some of the president's Democratic allies. A bipartisan coalition like that could possibly get something done. Jessica Yellen, CNN, Washington. One of America's most notorious mod bosses finally goes down. James Walter Porter led Boston Siren Mob for 20 years. He was also an FBI informant turned fugitive and spent 16 years on the run. But on Monday, a federal jury convicted Walter on 31 counts, holding him responsible for 11 murders. 83 years of age, he now faces a maximum of life in prison plus 30 years. We have details of that story in this report. Soldiers mob enforcer Kevin Weeks says he buried the bodies, moved the guns, and collected the cash which bookmakers and businessmen paid to stay in business. Weeks was one of the government's eyewitnesses. Last month he came face to face with his one-time crime partner. He, um, he wasn't the same guy I know. I mean he's a lot older, but his, uh, he had no life in his eyes. He, had, he was subdued. He had changed. He just uh, kind of lost the spark. Weeks turned against his former boss after learning Bulger, who ran a murderous criminal enterprise for 20 years, had spent much of that time as a government